So the iPhone 15 Pro Maxes are here and this is a phone that I'm itching to switch to. But I'll do that later after actually testing them in detail. For now, this is my first impressions video of the phone of all the new features that I've started testing in the day that I've used it. By the way, apart from the Pro Max, we also have the iPhone 15 and the AirPods Pro 2nd Gen with Type-C cable. Let me know if you guys want to see any content around those as well specifically. But for now, we'll talk about the 15 Pro Max. And if you're here for the very first time, I'm Ashad. you're watching Track and Take English, your destination for detailed, incisive gadget reviews. All right, first things first, this is the first iPhone with a Type-C port. So the one thing that you need to know is that the 15 Pro Max actually supports the faster Gen 3.2 standard compared to USB Gen 2 support on the 15 and the 15 Plus. But does that mean that you get faster charging cables inside the box? Well, no, the Type-C braided cable that you get inside the box of the Pro Max is also of Gen 2 standard only. So you will have to buy a Gen 3.2 supported cable separately. But one thing I was really, really happy to see is that you can now charge any one of these these 15 series phones with any Android Type-C cable as well. And apart from that, you've also got reverse wired charging support on the Type-C port, and that's up to speeds of 4.5 watt. So you can charge the AirPods uh, you know, Pro 2nd Gen easily. By the way, one of the things I really like about the Type-C support is that now I don't need a separate cable, separate lightning cable in my car for the wired CarPlay support. I can use that same Type-C cable for Android Auto or CarPlay. And with the Pro series especially, since you've got support for faster USB standard, you can also directly connect it to an SSD and work on whatever project you're working on on the phone itself. But one of the things that we haven't had time to test yet and something we really want to do very, very soon is the transfer speeds, uh, the difference between USB Gen 2 and Gen 3.2 and of course the charging speeds as well. Apparently it's been improved, but we'll check that out in the detailed review. All right, now let's talk about the design. The first time I held this, actually this titanium natural color variant of the phone in my hand and I was like, wait, this weighs as much as my 14 Pro and it's actually comfortable to use as well. Obviously because Apple has used titanium for the build this time around the weight is much lower and it's got contoured edges as well making it very comfortable to hold there are four color options on the pro variants of the phone but these are definitely the two best colors according to me at least and this one the natural titanium color is my favorite the titanium blue is something that a lot of you know the folks in the office prefer which one do you like let me know in the comments below also while you're at it why don't you even hit that subscribe button and maybe give the video a thumbs up as well by the way there were a lot of pictures that I saw on Twitter floating around saying that titanium is getting decolored in the, you know, samples that were there at the hands-on at the keynote. But let me tell you, that seems like oil stains because that is exactly what I'm seeing over here and that's not necessarily decoloration. I think uh, we'll have to wait and watch for a verdict on whether decoloration is happening. It'll definitely not happen this soon for sure. I know that titanium is very difficult to color, but then again, I mean, it's not going to happen so soon at least. Now, because of titanium, one of the other things that has happened is the fact that I I think heat dissipation is slightly better because the phone didn't get hot at all. In the time that we were pushing it, literally, like, you know, we were running benchmarks on this, it didn't get hot at all. Just warm to the touch, so that's good. Definitely better than the stainless steel on the 14 Pro Max. Now, the other very important change, one that is a little weird, if you ask me, is that the mute switch has now been replaced by this action button, something that was leaked for a long time. Now, what does this action button do is that you can actually use it for mute as well, which is basically what it is set to as default. But what we noticed in our testing is that it works a little weirdly. A single press shows you the current uh, mode that it's in, whether it's in ringer or silent. And when you long press it, that's when the mode actually changes. And it's not like you can customize that either. What you can customize is for this action button to maybe switch on the torch or, you know, switch on the camera. Now, when you long press the button and if you've set the camera, then the camera opens up and one another press will actually help it take a picture or capture a video as well. Now, within that camera setting itself for the action button, you can actually choose whether you want it to take a photo or a video or switch to selfie mode, whichever mode that you prefer. But honestly, there should have been at least another the double tap option given. Hopefully Apple is listening and hopefully that change happens, but I know that a lot of people will definitely talk about that. Now, largely what's changed is of course the material of the phone itself. And more importantly, it's probably the most refined version of this design yet first introduced in the 11 Pro series. So what makes me wonder is what will happen after this? I think Apple will have to change the design entirely for the 16 series because I think this is in its best form yet. 
There's not much that changed in the display of the iPhone 15 Pro Max, but most importantly, the bezels are so, so slim now. So you get more screen estate and it just looks very beautiful. The other important change that I really want to talk about is the fab, uh, you know, shrink that has happened. So now it has moved from four nanometers to three nanometers with the A17 Pro. Now I did make a short video about how the A17 Pro is not the best version of the three nanometer chip that we've seen yet. And you should go and check that short out. But the performance, we've tested it and it's mind blowing to be entirely honest. Because one of the things that we noticed is with the Geekbench test, the single core score that we got is actually higher than that of the M2 chip inside this laptop. Well, that's just one metric. What this indicates is that this is a very, very powerful chip. We get an Antutu score of over 1.5 million. And more importantly, gaming is gonna be fantastic on this because you've now got, uh, you know, hardware enabled ray tracing. So one of the things that we recently noticed is that 3 d Mark actually has a ray tracing benchmark as well. And so we tried that out on the 15 Pro Max, the 14 Pro and the S23 Ultra with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 as well. And what we noticed was very, very interesting is that on the 15 15 Pro Max, we got the best stability with the A17 Pro and more importantly, the max frame rate of 31 FPS as well. In comparison, the S23 Ultra with the 8 Gen 2 achieved 22 FPS and the stability was not as good as the 15 Pro Max, but still there. This is very, very good to see primarily because we are looking forward to console quality gamings on the 15 Pro Max and the 15 Pro series in general. So Death Stranding is coming, Assassin's Creed uh, Mirage is coming, so I'm really excited for that. But I know that there is a lot of controversy and discussion around the fact that, well, who cares about console quality gaming on an iPhone? It's going to heat up. It's probably going to lose a lot of battery. Also, the pricing will matter a lot as well. But then again, remember this, the iPhone 15 Pro is probably going to be in the hands of millions, definitely going to be in the hands of millions of people considering the iPhone 14 Pro Max was. Now, when you take that into the equation and if people start getting accustomed to that kind of quality on a phone, I am presuming that consoles we'll have to start worrying a little bit, especially if Apple can figure out maybe say wirelessly, you know, pushing the screen onto a display and then for you to be able to play that, that'd be so cool. But yes, I'd love to know your thoughts on console quality gaming on phones as well. This is a raging discussion I've been having on Twitter lately. By the way, the battery sizes have increased a tiny bit and it's a three nanometer fabrication process. So hopefully the battery life is definitely better than the 14 Pro series because it wasn't great on the 14 Pro series. It was really good on the 13 Pro series, but hopefully it's better on this one. Again, something we'll test out for you guys. Now, with respect to charging speeds, you can do 20 watts on the 15 series, but on this, at least like the 14 Pro Max, I think you can definitely do 27 watts, something that we'll definitely check it out. But there were some leaks that said it can probably touch 35 watts. That's something that we have to test for you guys. Oh, also one more thing I wanted to mention is that the RAM has been upgraded to 8 GB RAM on the Pro variants this time around. I think it's just extra headroom. iOS generally doesn't need that much RAM, but that little bit of headroom for when iOS starts becoming, uh, you know, these phones will run, will get support for at least five years from now on. So you, that headroom will definitely help. Unfortunately, none of the console quality games are out yet, but all we could test was Call of Duty on this. So you can play at 120 FPS uh, with medium graphics. So that shouldn't be a problem. All right, finally, let's talk about uh, the cameras. And this one is again, very interesting because for the first time, because Apple has had more space to accommodate a larger telephoto camera, on the 15 Pro Max, you get a 5X zoom, but on the 15 Pro, it's still a 3X zoom. So you've got a 14MP primary camera, 12MP ultra wide, 12MP telephoto, and a 12MP selfie camera as well. Now we did take a few pictures. These are very preliminary samples right now. You know, and I know of course, that we are definitely going to do a huge number of comparisons. So you have to subscribe to the channel for that. The first one we'll start off with is Galaxy S23 Ultra. So stay tuned for that. But the few pictures that we took, the one thing that we wanted to test and see was what did the camera do especially well? Uh, and if it has improved on the problems with the 14 Pro Max. And interestingly, Smart HDR5 fixes the one issue that I had with the 14 Pro series. And that is the fact that the highlights would generally get blown out every single time the background was too bright. The 15 Pro Max doesn't seem to have that problem. That's a really good, you know, move from Apple. Well, now coming to the features that have been added, for example, you also do get an automatic portrait mode. So for example, if you're shooting friends uh, or family, or if you're shooting a cat or a dog, then the phone uh, immediately recognizes that there is a subject and it automatically switches on to the option where you can switch the or change the focus. And when you change the focal length, you can, of course, take a portrait photo as well. In fact, you can do after taking the picture too. So that's very helpful. And the 5X camera, especially the telephoto camera is fantastic 
fantastic. It shoots very good pictures, especially in low light. It looks very, very good. Now, one of the features that a lot of people are also talking about is the fact that with the primary camera, you can shoot three different focal lengths now, 24mm, 28mm and 35mm. We tried it out. It's basically 1x, 1.2x and 1.5x. And this is what the pictures look like. You guys let me know what you think about. Now, like I said, you can shoot 24mm, 28mm, 35mm using the primary camera, but you can set one of these focal lengths as uh, your default as well. So let's say, for example, if you prefer the 35mm, uh, you know, medium format, then you can switch to that as your default as well. And now you can also shoot 24MP HEIF max images. And there's, of course, the option for shooting 4K 60fps ProRes videos as well. So this is basically all that you can do with the 15 Pro and Pro Max's cameras. And it seems like Apple has improved a lot, but that's only if you're checking it side by side compared to a 14 Pro or a 14 Pro Max. If you don't really care about that too much, I think 14 Pro users will be like, there's not much of an improvement. But anyway, what I'll do is I'll put all the pictures in a G Drive link and put it in the description. Go check it out and let me know what you guys think. All right, so my first impressions of the 15 Pro Max are that initially I thought, well, this is iterative. This doesn't do much or, you know, that's the general idea that I got after seeing the keynote. But once the phone has come to our hands, I think that there is definitely a lot lot going on out here, something that I want to test in the weeks to come. Oh, by the way, before I forget, I also wanted to talk about one very, very important thing. The fine woven case, we got that too. It's got a really nice texture. Some people don't like it, but I kind of like it. I really did find it fine woven and nice to touch and hold. That's for this first impressions video of the iPhone 15 Pro Max. And like I said, do let me know if, what kind of videos would you like to see with the iPhone 15, with the AirPods Pro second gen, and of course the watches as well. So we'll try to do that for you too. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, keep tracking and stay safe.